Grace, oops, I pulled this out a little bit. Grace and peace to all of you and welcome to Sleepy Hall. Oh, it's the baby Jesus. Yes, yes, this is your church. You bet. <laughs> um, we had our Christmas pageant last week and this blessed baby was our baby Jesus. So it was just such a special celebration. Um, so yes, grace and peace to all of you and welcome and uh, to Sleepy Hollow Presbyterian Church this surprisingly glorious day, third Sunday of Advent, Love Sunday. And I think we have some special visitors today. So Andy, would you like to introduce? Welcome. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're s so glad you're here. Welcome. Anybody else have a special visitor? Okay, yes. We, we love we love you talking. Um, so uh, we do have birthdays to celebrate. So does anybody have a December birthday or a December anniversary? Yes, Carolyn. Oh, okay. All right, that's <laughs> so useful. I know she's just never ages at all. Uh, anybody else have a December birthday? Oh yes. Okay, Crystal. You're a Dece you're a December. Yay, you have birthday buddies. Crystal and Carolyn and Jonathan in the booth. Oh, that's right. That's why we missed you last week. Your birthday. Yes, that's right. Anybody else? Welcome Zoom worshipers. We love you. Chat in your birthdays or anniversaries to Jonathan. Okay, we got that one. Anybody else? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I'll, I'll be right over. Aaron. Happy birthday. Okay. Millie. How many great-grandchildren do you have? Eight. Oh, yeah, let's have a round of applause. <laughs> Eight great-grandchildren. Doug, any December anniversaries or birthdays in your family? No? Okay, anybody else? Ryan. Ryan's mom. Yeah, well, and she was such a wonderful visitor helping us bake all 300 cookies for the unhoused. That was great. Alex, any, any birthday? Okay, all right. So first, okay. Andy. Oh, 16 today. That's a special day. Yes. Callie. Oh, of course. Andy, Bain, your dad on the 23rd. You bet. Yes, Olivia. Oh, my goodness. This is perfect. So many wonderful Christmassy birthdays. Yes, Carolyn. Oh, so you and your brother are birthday buddies. One day, all right, and then Allison. I can't believe he's already four. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now the first thing we're gonna do, any December birthdays in the Rivers family? That's right, yeah, oh that was, okay. Well, we're so happy he visited, right? Yeah, that was great. All right, let's take a moment to bring into our hearts and minds and put them at the top. All these beautiful loved ones that we've mentioned who have December birthdays who are not in the room. And that includes you, Jenny Gelman on Zoom and everyone else on Zoom and all of our loved ones that we are remembering. They are blessed. They've been blessed since the day they were born. May December be a very special birthday month for them. And may they know we love them and that God loves them. Amen. And now if you're in the room, please come forward and line up here with care because there's a lot of excitement up here. So let's get Carolyn, Crystal. Uh, let's see, who else? Don't try to escape. I wrote you down. Uh, Let's see, Jonathan, uh, Aaron. Okay, well, we'll, we'll we're not going to leave you out. Okay, very good. All right, so we've got got them here and got. Oh, good, this is good. I'll stand here so I can get you to. Okay, so let's say the day again, December fifth, sixth, tenth, 
but that was good. All right, very good. Everyone's got their own day, so that's good. I want to just make sure. Nance, can I help you? Are you good out there? Okay, she's good. All right, so December birthdays. God has loved you since the moment you came to this beautiful earth and every day since. So hear this good news. You are a blessed child of God. God loves you. God never, ever will leave you or forget you. Feel God's blessing this month of your birthday and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming forward. Thank you. All right. Now, we have a, such special choir today. Oh, my goodness. We want to welcome back young Pat and all of our beautiful choir singers. And let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Beautiful. That was beautiful. And now I'd like to call forward the Welch family and uh, for the call to worship. All Does everyone have a bulletin? Let's all join them in the call to worship. <coughs> Open your heart and look around. We light the first candle as a sign of hope for the world. We light the second candle as a sign of peace for the world. We light the third light candle, candle as a sign of love for the world. Let's all stand and sing 110, Love Has Come. Great job. You did a great job.
let's all join in the unison prayer printed on page two of your bulletin. God of love, awaken us to the beauty which surrounds us and reminds us of your love. Free us from fear, worry, resentment, and all that stands in the way of love. Energize us for service to the world and fill us with compassion for all people. Now please take a moment and listen to God's loving voice for you today. If it's the voice of love, it's the voice of God. Amen. Now hear your assurance of grace. God loves the world so much that God has given us Jesus to tell us how much God loves us, every one of us. So hear this good news. You are accepted as you are. You are loved and forgiven for every time you've fallen short. God loves you. Amen. And now as people who are accepted, forgiven, and loved, let us share the sign of God's peace with one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let's pass the peace. And those on Zoom, pass through chat. Pass the peace. <laughs> How is everybody doing this morning? Good. Okay. You know, we always do our names first, right? So what's your name? And, and then I'll repeat it for the folks at home. So Julia, Claire, Abigail, Josephine, Natalie, and I think we have Isabel back. Yeah, that's okay. Shy is fine. I was extremely shy until I was 25 years old. So people don't know that about me. And you are... And then Aaron are our teachers. And Kelly, you going to help today? That'd be awesome. So thank you. Thank you all. Now, this is, the this is the month of December, the season of Advent. We're waiting for Christmas. But in the church, we're not waiting for Santa to come and put presents under the tree. Mm, we kind of are too. But we're also waiting for the big day of the celebration of the birth of Jesus which we celebrated last week, remember, with the pageant. And we will also celebrate on Christmas Eve because we're going to have a stable and another chance to be merry, okay? So this particular Sunday is Love Sunday. But every one of the Sundays of December, we're, we're celebrating hope. 
We talked about what hope was. It's like a wish. It's like what you pray to God for. And Friday night, we had the most wonderful time. And look behind you, see what's different this week. Did everybody see what's on the windows? Oh my gosh. All right, where's Jody hiding? There she is. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come over to Jody, who designed this project, and I'm going to let her explain it. So um, everyone drew their hands, and then they picked something that they wanted to lift up in hope, so something they had hope for in the future. And so we have hands that are lifting up children, uh, you know, all children, and we have nature, so we have trees and birds and dogs and flowers. And then we have uh, hearts, people were lifting up for more love in the world and a dove for peace, and then a light bulb for new hopeful ideas for the world, and joy, and health care. So all the health care workers were lifted up. And so that's the, what we did. So can, can we have a round of applause for Jody? That uh, is just, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous at night, too. It'll be gorgeous Christmas Eve. That paper is so special, but there's so much love in that. And you girls were here, right? And you were not here, but you'll have a chance today. So don't worry. We always have makeup time for chances. So we want everyone to be included. So, yes, yeah, so that's, that's a beautiful way for, from art, from everybody's art, you can see there's big hands and little hands, to remember that we're all in one big group community of love, having our hopes for a bright world all lifted up to God. So that's a special thing we do for love, because love is not just a feeling. Now let me ask you this question. Do you love anybody? Yeah. Pets count. Do you, yeah, everybody, right? Do you, so you love people and do you maybe a pet? If, do you have a pet? Yes. Do you love your pet? Yeah. So now if you love your pet, see, then this is where love is not just a feeling. It's also an action or a lot of actions, right? So if you love somebody, you need to, you know, do some things, right? So what do you do for your pet if you love them? Feed them, snuggle with them. Depends on the pet. I'll be telling the grown-ups a little later about uh, Snuggles, the class Python, in my granddaughter's uh, class, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, <coughs> so, but yes, but if you have a nice little puppy or something, you w or kitty, there's many animals that you can snuggle with, right? So, and one of the things we do here for people, not pets, is sometimes we do cards. So is Pam here today? Oh, <laughs> all right. So last week, the children, we had a, lo a lot, 30 children with the pageant, did cards for Pam who was sick and you you loved those cards ha it was happy happy tears yes ha happy tears yes but but <laughs> yes but she loved getting those cards so today we're going to do two things and you're going to come back for holy communion holy communion is one of the ways that that God shows us God's love for us and brings us all together but um you're going to do hearts of love so that we can put those up and, and you can think about who and what you love and you can draw it or write it. And then we're also going to do a few more cards one more time, right? Because the cards were a really big success for Pam and really made her feel loved. So we have some people in our church who can't get to church anymore very much. And one of them is Will Swalberg. He's our oldest member. He's 99 and a half. 99 and a half. And Sharon Hamilton has visited him regularly all these years through COVID and been such a good angel to him. And I call, call him, but sometimes he, he can't even really pick up the phone. And I, we, we all, we try to visit, but, but he, he would love Christmas cards. So your teachers have some stickers. So let's make some beautiful Christmas cards and I'll mail them all tomorrow to Will Swalberg. And then another special thing is our choir, whoever can make it, is going to go, after we sing carols for our special cookie and singing fellowship, they're going to go over to Fairfax to a place called Victory Village where a lot of seniors live who actually love our choir. And they asked if our choir could please come back this year and sing to them. So maybe you could make a few Christmas cards for them too. Does that sound okay? And then come back upstairs for communion. I know, I know you're artistic. 
all right? So let's say a prayer. God, may these beautiful children feel your love every day of their lives, and may they share it with others. Amen. All right. Have some fun with your three teachers and make some cards. That would be awesome. Hearts and cards.
Please join me in prayer to illuminate our worship today. Lord, may we receive the gift. May we receive our own hands, our own thoughts, and our own neighbors with love. If in this receiving we sense pain, may we give compassion. If in this receiving we sense joy, may we give celebration. If in this receiving we sense humor, may we give a good laugh. Amen. Our first gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 67 through 79. Um, and this is Zechariah's prophecy, who is the father of John the Baptist, who we met a couple weeks ago. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord and prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people and the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. second gospel reading today is from the gospel according to John chapter 13 verses 34 and 35. This could be the most important verses in the Bible. This is Jesus speaking to his inner circle. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Amen. So last Sunday, I was coming to church a little earlier than usual, and uh, my head was just filled with a thousand details. I was trying to remember, you know, which children had signed up for which parts. I did have this written down somewhere. And also who was sick and not going to be able to be here and then who wanted to switch with who and you know blah 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 right so da, 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 da. and uh, and I came I, I live in Fra Michael and I live in Fairfax and I was coming over the hill you know where on Sir Francis Drake where the good earth is on your right and 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 with all this clutter in my head I was trying to hum the opening hymn people look east right so I looked to the east and the clouds were absolutely celestial it was incredible. I mean, this, we have a gift of a really unexpectedly beautiful day today, but this was exceptional. It was like that wonderful thing where you look at the sun kind of just bursting in from the clouds and you think, oh, it's like heavenly, it's celestial. It just, I I if you can pause enough to take it in, it actually elevates you, you know? Ha you know what I, are, are we, do we, are we saying yes, yes, right? Now, this this is a hard experience to we can't capture it it's like the holy spirit it comes and it goes right um when hayden angaro was here a couple weeks ago he shared that shortly after his blessed mother's death he was up in tahoe and he was driving along and he saw like i think it was a double rainbow it was an enormous rainbow a and he was driving and he actually did stop because he felt that that rainbow was like a message and he needed to stop right in the middle of the road fortunately other drivers were stopping to take pictures of the rainbow too so it wasn't just him but for him it was a love letter from god it really was so he stopped and he took it in right 
So often we don't do that. Even if we're not just driving in our car, so often something really beautiful happens and we're just too busy to take it in. Yesterday, um, I was so Grace, my granddaughter, was over for sleepover. As those of you know, she had the best time of her life at art night. She's like, I'm never leaving the church, Grandma. She just thought it was the funnest thing we ever did. And so, um, but then I did have her father come up and get her Saturday morning because I <laughs> had a lot I had to do. So, but, but, uh, but Michael and I had gone a little berserk. You know how it is when you're at the Christmas tree lot and all the trees look the same size. You can end up with something really tall. And uh, so we got home and we got the tree to the front porch and that's as far as we were going to get it. So I did say to my son, I think I need you to come get Grace and help us with the tree. So there was this love moment when they, uh, Michael, Andy, Grace had all gotten the tree up. I was the monitor to make sure it was straight. I love that job. And, and then Andy and Grace were under the tree trying to tighten the stand. And it was like, I, I said this to myself. I said, okay, this is a love moment. I've got my 34-year-old son and my 7-year-old granddaughter lying on the floor of my house, and he's explaining to her how you tighten the, you know, the little, whatever you call those things, to, to screw things to make the tree not fall over, which is a good thing. It was so cute. My head was awfully busy, but I, of all the stuff that I had been, you know, but I thought, I have to try to take this in. So I'm saying this to all of you because I know have you ever, uh, maybe maybe not, but have you ever ignored a house plant to the point that it got so dry that when you watered it, the water just went off the top? Right. Okay. This is what I call parched plant syndrome. And plenty of us have this in our heart and spirit. We just, and it's not because no one loves us, because God loves us. And every, here at church, we're full of love, but we're not taking it in. We're not allowing, we're not doing, and it's a spiritual practice. It's not self-indulgent. It's absolutely life-giving to take that pause and let that, the water of God's love and love from our families and our friends and our church buddies, let it soak in. We want to be absorbent paper towels, not parched plants, right? So especially at this time of year, because when we can start soaking it in, we just have so much more to share. We, w we would much more uh, likely react with love than with, com you know, judgment and all those other things that we would really rather not lead with. It's not easy, but it is a spiritual practice to be able to notice the good Notice the love, even if it's like lying on your floor, burrowed under your Christmas tree. Notice the love, the celestial clouds, and take in this amazing message of God's vast, all-inclusive love. It puts the various love verses in the Gospels in a beautiful light. Because once we, once we get this idea that God's beauty really is shared with everyone, we can put verses like John 3.16 and Matthew 5 about don't just love the people who love you back. Love your enemies, right? Because God's sun and rain fall on the good and the evil. This vast and kind of incomprehensibly beautiful love of God, we get a glimpse. We can get just a little glimpse. Now, God's love, so a lot of people say unconditional. Okay. God's love is all-inclusive. There is always possibility for redemption. Nothing is impossible with God. God accepts us as we are. There are no mistakes, right? And God's love is guardrailed by truth and justice. And this is what Zechariah's song that Ryan read for us really brings up for us, is that the understanding of God in the community into which John the Baptist was born, into which Jesus was born, was a God who loves justice. And that's part of how God shows God's love for all people. Is God wants things to be fair. God wants the, the, the poor shepherds to have access to the baby Jesus and know that Jesus is for them too, right? So this is a God who loves justice. And God loves truth. We, the Gospel of John tells us Jesus is truth and grace. So sometimes if we're really walking on that glorious path of peace, that Zechariah talks about the dawn breaking, the tender mercy of our God, the path of peace that God lays out in front of us, very surprising things happen. And something very surprising happened to me. It's a little story, but I want to share it with you because it was so surprising to me. So I was shopping 
grocery shopping at the Good Earth, Tuesday, I think, wha- earlier in the week. And I was trying to, rem- again, busy head, right? And I, uh, there were four high school girls who, if I had been paying more attention, I would realize were shoplifting. But I was not paying attention. Um, but then the store security person came up, uh, a stern young woman, And she said in a very stern voice to these four girls, and I I just happened to be standing right there with my grocery cart, right? She said to these four girls in a very stern voice, she said, go pay for that stuff, go pay for that stuff, or or we will tell your school. This is a private, family-run business, and we can't afford to have you girls stealing. She said it loud, too. All right. So then she, but then she did, she kind of went like this to direct them over to the cash registers, but she didn't, like, follow them, Right. So I do not understand how, but I followed them. I just took my grocery cart and I followed the girls. I'm not sure, I didn't know why I was even doing it. I'm like, what, am I going over there to make sure that they pay at the cash register? Like, why would I do that, you know? I mean, I'm not the police. So somehow I ended up watching them as they were put, like putting a baguette back in the bread bin. And, you know, and s- so one of the girls put a lot of stuff back. The other three girls got in the line, but they were having like a conversation because it's lunchtime at the Good Earth. I don't even know why I was so foolish to be there. Lunchtime on a school day at the Good Earth is like Archie Williams High School, right? The parking lot is not safe for people like me. The zoom, zoom, zoom. So so they're debating. Are we going to stay in this line? I think. I was not eavesdropping, I promise. But my sense of the body language was that they were debating whether they were going to stay in the line or just like take, you know, put it in the pocket and walk out the door and see, because the security guard was elsewhere. So somehow I walked right up. Who wants to be the girls? I'll pretend it's you folks. Okay, I walked right up and I said, girls, and the voice that came out of my mouth, I did not even recognize. And I said, girls, do you have enough money for lunch? I said, because I'm a pastor over at Sleepy Hollow Church, and what we mostly do is make sure that hungry people have enough to eat, and I would be really happy to pay for your lunch if you don't have enough money for lunch. It was amazing. I was surprised. They were surprised. <laughs> we're all looking at each other like, whoa, you know. And, uh, but then they kind of, and the one girl said, no, no, we can do it. And then they kind of looked at each other like, do we really have enough money for lunch? And I said, no, really, I would be really happy to pay for your lunch. I would. And they said, no, that's okay, we can do it. I said, okay, just wanted you to know, you know. And then I just walked away. It was like a really beautiful interaction. It was so surprising to me. It was not me, you know. I I had no idea that that's what I was going to say. So sometimes we lead with love because we're just, God uses us for God's loving purposes. And I think those girls needed to know that somebody cared about them, you know, and that, you know, it might be fun, exciting to shoplift. Some, a lot of times people shoplift out of a sense of deep deprivation, but I wasn't going to go into psychoanalysis. I was just like, if you need money for lunch, I would be so happy to pay for your lunch, and I sincerely felt it, you know. So it was like a beautiful, surprising thing. God always is looking for chances to work in us and through us. If we, if we stop enough so that we're not feeling parched plants, so that we're feeling absorbent paper towel, God will use us in surprising ways to bring more of God's love to the world. Now, I'll finish with this story about the snake. Okay, so a lot of times people think, you know, to share the love of God means that I can have no boundaries or limits at all, and I have to just say yes to everything. Because Mary said yes to God, and, and the innkeeper said yes to, you know, baby Jesus being born in the stable, and Joseph said yes to Mar- I'm marrying Mary. I mean, there's a lot, the Bible does have a lot of examples of Moses said yes, and he certainly didn't want to. A lot of times, you know, we get the idea that sharing God's love means we just have to say yes to everything, right? But there are exceptions. So when I got grace, and you're welcome to argue with me about this later, <laughs> But when I got Grace uh, from school Friday, because she was so excited to come to art night, she was so excited about what had just happened at the end of the school day. Her cheeks were all pink. She said, Grandma, the most wonderful thing happened. I'm like, what? She's like, I get to take Snuggles home 
for the entire two-week Christmas break. <laughs> I'm like, who is Snuggles? Oh, Snuggles is a python. She's like, she's like and, and sh do you know what we're going to feed Snuggles? And I'm thinking, who's the we on that? You know, <laughs> and she's like, rat pups. I'm like, rat pups? <laughs> she's like, yes. And my family's going to Napa for uh, a weekend, and I'm thinking, oh, no. <laughs> no, the answer is no. I am not taking Snuggles and feeding Snuggles rat pups. No, you know. And, uh, and but she, she didn't ask. No, my son's going to ask. <laughs> uh, because she said, my dad will be feeding Snuggles to rat pups. And, and I said, uh, does Snuggles have a secure cage? Uh, so, cause <laughs> so, you know, so she said, yes, but we get Snuggles out and play with it. But there is one rule. I said, what's that? She said, you can't let Snuggles wrap itself around your neck. So I'm like, okay, Grace. Well, that's really exciting. So then I'm like, note to self. I just need to make sure I'm very clear that, you know, if they need to take snuggles with them to this, wherever they're going o over the holidays, that's great. Or maybe find someone else. But I personally am not, I, I can't put, I, I have to say no. Does anyone understand? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, there are people, well, Merle used to love snakes. Dennis, if you're watching, loves, there's, there are people who love snakes, and they probably wouldn't have a problem with, you love snakes? Okay, do not say yes. <laughs> so, but, but at any rate, so when we are tapping into the all-inclusive and gorgeous love of God, we can still remember that God loves us enough that we're allowed to say no sometimes, right? As long as we're not, like, harming others, you know, as long as we're thinking of the good of the community, we can. And in fact, when we do that, then we have even more love to share. So may it be so. Amen. As we come to the sacrament of Holy Communion, is there anyone who could just, uh, Braylon, would you mind running downstairs and bringing the ki kids up? You're the best athlete in the room. So, just, uh, I, and you can just leave that door open, and uh, there's a door stop there somewhere over on your front, yeah. And just uh, bring the children up. That would be great. So, we, we want them upstairs for Holy Communion. Oh, thank you, Jody. Thank you. So, we'll just all take a moment and just. Oh, breathe in peace. Come on in. Come on in. Come back and sit with your folks. Thank you, Braylon. Thank you so much. They're finishing their art up.
Thank you so much. So uh, does everybody have an insert to your bulletin? Yes, all right. Uh, this is the invitation to the table. This beautiful, beautiful table. This is Jesus's table and all are welcome here. Please join me in our great prayer of thanksgiving. God be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for the beauty of creation, for the blessings and miracles of everyday life, and for the gift of life. You set us in this world to be truth tellers and peacemakers, living in harmony with all of creation. We give thanks that when we turn from the ways of peace, you call us back with love. Holy, holy, redeemer, we delight in Jesus shows us the way to a new world community, one in which the last is first, justice prevails, and resources are shared, so that all people may lead lives of dignity and feel valued. The world rebelled against his message, and he was crucified out of fear. But death cannot defeat life. Jesus breathed the spirit upon his followers and gave birth to the church, Christ's body in the world. Holy Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Holy Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace, grant us your peace. Gracious God, pour out your spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and grapes from the earth. By your spirit, make us one with all who share this feast. Unite us in love and energize us to work for a world of peace and justice for all people. Today, we lift up special prayers for uh, Jean Marquis and her family. Uh, uh, always on Zoom, and uh, just for prayers of healing and well-being and strength and love. God, in your grace. Amen. You hear our prayers. We welcome prayer from the church community and from the, our Zoom worshipers at home, just on Q&A, and Jonathan will read them. Can I lift up for you? Yeah. 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 Uh, so, um, dear friends of the Weller family, we want to lift up healing prayers for Donna and prayers for her family, Michael and Leyland recovery, full recovery, and uh, may God's comfort be very present and accompany them through each, each day of this difficult time they're in, and also prayers for John Weller's parents, who are also in a difficult time, and may God's presence strengthen them uh, as they deal with various health issues and, uh, and strengthen the whole family. God in your grace. Prayers for your brother, Millie? Yes, for Millie's brother. God in your grace. God.
God, in your grace, you hear our prayers for the foster children, for Frankie, for all of the donors. Thank you. God, in your grace, you hear our prayers. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together and use the name for God that brings your heart closest to God. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus sat at table with his disciples, the ones he loved. And he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper in the same manner, he took the cup. And he blessed it. And he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you. This is my life poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So every time that we eat this bread and drink this cup, we show forth the saving life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will the servers please come forward? Now, Corin had to leave early today, so who, Carolyn, you're serving? Yes, definitely. Jen is serving. I think, uh, could I have you? Oh, well, Anna's right here, Scott. She's, she's going to serve them there. Okay. And then, actually, Scott, why don't you go ahead and come on, and then th we'll have the two of you. Here you go. Fabulous. Okay, so we serve communion by everyone coming forward to either station. I, I'm almost thinking maybe you all go spread out a little bit that way. And then there's a just point if you want the bread or the gluten-free wafer and, and the cup of uh, grape juice, non-alcoholic. So it's the bread of life, the cup of salvation. The bread of life, the cup of salvation. The feast begins.
join me in the prayer following communion at the very bottom of the back of your insert. May we carry in our hearts the peace embodied in this bread and cup. Strengthen our love for one another and for all creation and let us be peace in the world. Amen. <coughs> It's always a hard transition for me to go from the Lord's feast to uh, the invitation to the offertory uh, offering, but uh, or the stewardship update. Oh gosh! So, but James asked me to tell you that we um, our goal this year to fund the church next year is 50 pledges and 150 thousand dollars, which is slim considering the you know all the. But anyways, it's tight budget. Um, so right now we're at 49 pledges and $146,710. We need one more pledge. We need $3,290. we are not expecting that to all come from one person. <laughs> so, so a number of you went up on your pledges. Thank you. You're covering for people who are in reduced circumstances and can't can't do it, you know. So we just thank you for your generosity. And if anybody else can pledge and anybody can squeak out a little bit more, just put a note in the offering basket and thank you. And uh, and so now the morning offering will be taken.
Thank you. And please join me in the prayer of dedication. Let us pray. God of love and justice, we trust that these, our generous gifts and pledges, will be put to good and faithful use, bringing about a more just and peaceful world for all people. Amen. So four quick announcements, very quick. One is uh, Jenny Gelman is coming. She's watching on Zoom, and she will be here if people didn't get to participate Friday in the gorgeous Hope Trees downstairs. It's an ongoing art project. You can write a beautiful little prayer of hope. There's stamps, and it's, it's lovely to decorate those three beautiful trees. Um, so, And we're so thankful to her. And then Jody's downstairs doing fellowship. Boy, she's wearing a lot of hats this week. But we're grateful to her and Corin also for the um, window art. Um, second thing is uh, to echo Frankie, yes, thank you everyone who signed up for the foster children gifts due next Sunday, right, or before. So we want to get those uh, here by no later than next Sunday. Third is today we're going to do some Christmas caroling. We have so many beautiful voices here. Alex, should we do it up here downstairs in the fellowship hall? I'm thinking maybe out, uh, all the doors open on the patio. We have lots of Christmas cookies. Why don't we do it downstairs on the patio? Because this, I think, is still just a little soggy. So we'll, we'll go downstairs, have our cookies, coffee, goodies, and carol. <coughs> yes, right after the uh, charge and blessing. Last uh, thing. Okay, we have a new mem uh, updated members and friends directory. I have done a very foolish thing here and tried to put this little, like, mountain climbing car, whatever you do, these little clippy hooks. Th you know, like when you get the restroom key at a, at a, at a uh, restaurant and they put some huge thing on it so you don't go home with the restroom key? That was the idea, but I'm not so sure this is going to function for very long. But the idea is we would love for you to look at your entry in the book and make sure that it's um, you want to be in the member and friend directory, which we only use for church purposes. We don't put it online. We don't want anyone to do use it for business purposes. Um, so it's only for church purposes that so you can call each other. So look and see if your entry's in there, if it's correct. Um, scratch out, correct anything that you, d you know, whatever. And this, this hook is going to fall off. But if you could just make sure whoever has it last that it ends up on my bench, that would be fantastic. All right, that's our last announcement. Let's stand and sing number 143, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
surcharge and benediction, and then please, the, um, the blessed directory is here, <laughs> and, and come downstairs for coffee and cookies and caroling, um, but here you go. So as you go out from here, make this Christmas season the one where you pause and soak in God's amazing love every day. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the constant companionship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you now and forever. Amen.